Hello everyone. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a complex and time-consuming project, it's good to have a simple build to switch to. For example, a nice kit or a PCB that you have swapped with someone. In my case, I have this really nice PCB and panel that I got from my friend Luther a while ago. I have been covering a design from him on my channel previously, and now it's time to build another one. This time it's a 4 HP wide module that can be used as either a sub oscillator or a clock divider. It has knobs and CV input to control the divider. And the cool thing about this design is that it's made using only logic circuits and other discrete ICs. Luther has a great GitHub with all the documentation that is needed for this build, including an interactive BOM where you can see all the components and where they should be placed, and you can tick them off one by one as you assemble the module. Alright, since this is an SMT build, I will start by applying soldering paste to the pads using a syringe. I will use a low temperature soldering paste that will melt around 180 degrees Celsius. Applying paste is a bit tricky compared to using a solder paste stencil, but the good news is that you don't have to be super accurate when you dispense it, since the surface tension will pull the solder to the pads when the board is heated. So, with the solder paste applied, the next step is to bring up the eye bomb, a cup of coffee, my microscope and the SMT components that I will need to complete this build. You can place the components in basically any order that you want, but I usually start with the semiconductors to get them out of the way. After that I proceed with the ceramic capacitors and then I continue with the resistors. This build has two electrolytic SMT capacitors and I will place them last, since they are the most bulky of the SMT components. Please note that the electrolytic SMT components, the printed marking corresponds to the positive side, which is the opposite of the through-hole version, so watch out for that. After placing the PCB on the heat bed, I set the temperature to 190 degrees Celsius and wait for the solder to melt. After letting the PCB cool down, I check the solder joints and everything seems okay. So after cleaning the PCB, it's time to start soldering the rest of the through-hole components. The board is quite dense, so there isn't room for a boxed power connector. Luther suggests to use a red 2-pin connector to mark where pin 1 and 2 are located. I only have a yellow one, so I will use that together with two 4-pin connectors for the rest of the power pins. Since this is the only through-hole component on the component side, I continue with the panel components on the top side. Let's start with the pots, jacks and the switch, and solder them in place before we continue with the LEDs. I prefer to do it in two steps to make sure that all the components are screwed to the panel are secured. With those in place, I find it easier to fit the LEDs. The LEDs have a small notch on the side of the housing, which shows that it's the cathode, that is the minus side on the PCB. This side also have a shorter leg, so you can use that to make sure that you place them in the right way. Okay, it's time for the smoke test. After the usual test for shorts, we can connect the power cable to the module. Since the module does not have a boxed header, you will need to pay attention which way you connect the power cable. The red stripe should align with the yellow pin header. Everything seems to work fine, and when I turn the div knob, the divisor is changing between 2 and 16. At first I thought that one of the LEDs was broken, but after checking the documentation I learned that the LED shows the level of the div out by changing the intensity. So everything is good.
So this is the finished module. The CV and DIV knobs can be used to control the range and the offset of the divisor. The module also features an oscillator mixer output where you can set the mix between the input oscillator and the sub oscillator using the sub mix knob. All right, let's take this module for a spin. First demo is using the module as a CV controllable clock divider. An LFO in a sample and hold is used for modulating the CV input and the clock output is connected to the sequencer clock input. In the next demo, the module is used for a CV controlled octave shift of the sub oscillator. The base body sequencer uses the VCF CV out to set the CV level per step in the sequence. In this way, I can set the sub oscillator octave to a specific part of the bar to emphasize it. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you soon again. Goodbye for now.